Hey guys, it's Moonlander back with another Moonlander movie pick. And today we're going to be looking at a documentary called American Movie. That was wicked, man. So this documentary is directed by a Chris Smith. And he met the star of this documentary while editing film at a university in Wisconsin. And he decided to make a documentary about this guy trying to make a horror movie called Northwestern. American Movie was shown at Sundance and it won the Grand Jury Prize and was bought by Sony for a million dollars. So this documentary is about a guy named Mark who is extremely passionate about filmmaking and he's been making movies since he was 12 to 14 years old. He's hopelessly in debt from everything from credit card to back child support, phone bills, taxes, uh, I mean pretty much everything. Uh, and, he, and at the beginning of this documentary, his only job that he has is delivering newspapers. And uh, I guess the rest of his time he spends with his family and trying to make his movies. In the middle of this documentary, he quits working on Northwestern to finish a, a movie he started two years ago that he calls Coven, even though it's spelled Coven. Your film. Uh, the name of the film is Coven. Coven, Coven. Uh, Coven, uh, that's the proper pronunciation. No, no, Coven sounds like oven, man, and that's just, it doesn't work. And the rest of the documentary documents him finishing this movie, and he uses everyone around him to help him finish making this movie. I have to end up going out in the woods. I have my shopping to do. Okay, you gotta spread apart that way. All of the extras have just fell through, except for Mike Shank right there. We used to uh, do a lot of partying together, but I don't party anymore. <laughs> hey, he has his mom shoot scenes for him. Uh, he has his friends and local aspiring amateur actors be in this movie. He enlists extras of any kind to be in the movie. Um, he has an elderly uncle who he tr swindles into giving money to him to help him finish making this movie. So it's quite a tale of this guy making a movie. So why I love this documentary is uh, I think a documentary is only as good as the people that are in it and this has some truly amazing people in it. Not only is the main Focus Mark, uh, an amazing person, even though he's very irresponsible and, I mean, by the sound of it, you'd probably think this guy's quite a bum, but his passion and drive for filmmaking, um, I found something admirable about it, and he seems like a good person, he's just irresponsible. And you know, that's who he is. Not only is Mark uh, a fun person to watch in this documentary, but his best friend Mike, who's a recovering substance abuse user. And I realize I'm in the hospital, so I start checking my pockets for the acid, which they analyzed one hit. It turned out to be uh, a blotter of paper dipped in liquid PCP with a little bit of downer in it. Um, is uh, uh, just like a one-of-a-kind sort of person. Uh, uh, he has so many laugh-out-loud moments in this documentary. They're too numerous to count. Um, you can definitely tell that he used to party hard uh, just by his demeanor. But uh, he, he's a, a great friend to this guy, and you can tell he has an amazing heart. He's just somebody that you can't help but fall in love with. And I also enjoyed uh, the scenes where they showed 
um, Mark's girlfriend, and you can tell she um, was in love with this guy, uh, and I think in large part due to his passion. Uh, and, you know, not many people have that sort of passion about anything. So you can understand why this woman is in love with him, even though he's very irresponsible. And in the documentary, they interview his parents and, uh, you know, they, they both love him, uh, you know, and they just seem to, at this point in his life, accept that this is who he is. And while the father doesn't really want to help him, his mom is willing to help him with his filmmaking. Um, and they interview uh, his brothers, and yeah, his brothers don't think much of him. In fact, one of them says how he figured he thought he'd turn out to be a stalker or a serial killer of some kind. And I really like the way this documentary is done. Um... It's not mocking these people at all, and uh, I, I think that would have been uh, too easy to do, but um, it's done in a loving way, and a heartfelt way, uh, and you definitely get attached to these people um, through this documentary, and you care about them, and you want this guy to finish this film, and you want him to achieve his American dream. So my final thoughts about this documentary is it is easily one of my favorites. Um, and I watch a ton of documentaries, but this one is one I felt the need to buy. Um, and I want to show it to friends and family. Um, so I can't suggest this one enough. Um, yeah, you, you won't regret watching this documentary. It's uh, a truly unique experience. As somebody that loves movies as much as me, um, to watch somebody pursue their dream uh, and have this sort of passion about filmmaking, um, there's something inspiring about this documentary to me. Um, I, I'll, I'll never forget this one. It's always going to be in, uh, in my mind as one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. So, uh, yeah, if you've seen this, uh, please share your thoughts below. Um, and if you haven't, please watch it. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'll see you on the next one. Mike, make sure everyone has brown gloves. Does everyone have brown gloves? Oh, dude, dude, dude. Thank you.